All right, so here we have the fourth and final K7000 from the same owner. And I think we might be in for a fun one with this one because what this says is powers up, uh, powers up then immediate HV shutdown. Well, looking at it, I see a number of problems. Uh, this does not affect the issue, but due to improper packing, we have two busted neckboard pots. Uh, we have our green drive and our blue cutoff are broken. If we look here, our green drive pot is busted and our blue cutoff is busted. So I have to change those out, unfortunately, but that won't affect our HP shutdown. And we have a bulging. Uh, I think this is, I'm not sure which cap this is. Uh, that's covering it up with the glue. 57, it might be C57, I think, but regardless, this cap here is bulging. I don't know if you can tell, but it is... Well, in, in person it's much more obvious. Very slightly it's bulging, and you can feel it. So we got a bad cap, and it's tied to R101, and say it with me, bad solder joints on R101. Uh, everything on top is complete, but if we look at the back side, just like I say, well, it's another one that has this different type of remote board, and I'll talk about this again because all of the solder joints on this connector are like super paper thin, and it, they develop issues all the time, but that's not going to cause collapse. I don't not collapse, I'm sorry, uh, shutdown. That's not going to cause shutdown. So if we look on the back here, um, if, you, if you've learned by now on my 7000 videos, I go over the same thing on every one because they've all got the same problems. R101 is the pads and the joints are toasted. And if we push on the resistor here a bit, there it is, you can see wobble wobble. Not to be confused with robble robble. <laughs> Both sides, the other side over here. Uh, yep. So I don't even know if it's got a good joint. I don't even know if it's connected to the pad. I don't know about R89 because this one's not looking very good. Uh, and then the other, the other end of R89 is this one here. And then we have uh, R104, which is this guy right here. You can see that these solder joints are no good. Uh, let's do a little show and tell here. There we go. Uh, we can see that this one's probably not bad, but this one is cracked all around it. Can I get closer there? Yeah. Uh, you can, there, you can see that this is cracked around here, so that's another problem. Crack kills, ladies and gentlemen. So we got bad R104 solder joints, bad R101 solder joints. We've got, uh, someone's changed out this cap here, which is the one that's bulging, and it's in there correctly, but it's probably bulging because it connects to the same pad here that R goes across R101, so if R101's out of circuit, it could cause that cap to start bulging like that. Uh, so before we, real, uh, before we really do any kind of testing or troubleshooting, let's fix R101, let's fix R104, let's reflow and do all the stuff we normally do around this area, let's change out that capacitor, and then we'll go through and test all of our normal stuff, because there's no reason to even bother with any of that until we fix all this gobbledygook stuff here that we do on every single one. Um, all right, well, so let's get the iron on and let's get some solder and some braid and get cracking on this here. While we're waiting, let's clean up and trim up our braid. Clean up, trim up, trim up for your braid. Alright, and let's just take another quick look on this to see if there's any... Someone's been doing some reflowing on the flyback, and I forgot to mention the flyback also is nice and cracked. White knob flybacks almost always are all cracked. I can't... I'm not going to replace this. We're going to power it up with this install just to see if it works. But I'll probably put a new one on anyway because it's cracked across here, it's cracked across there, uh, it is cracked right across here. 
it's hard to tell. Let's see if we can clean some of this up here. Uh, yeah, it's cracked. Oh, cr holy cow, it's cracked all the way around here. It's, this is one big crack right here. This is one big crack. It's cracked across here. It's cracked across here. It's cracked down here across the screen pot. Uh, right across here. It's hard to see in person. I wonder if I can bend these out of their way slightly. and No, I can't get in there, but... I get the right angle on it. Uh, there you can see it's cracked from here all the way across over to there. So crack a mundo. Now I it very well could be going into shutdown because of the flyback, but I want to do all the repairs and then power it up. If well I'm gonna do the repairs and then we'll test. If we find no, nothing else wrong, I want to power it up with this in there just to see what it does. If it still goes into shutdown. Uh, we'll test our shutdown pod and, and uh, make sure it's set properly if we're able to, if it stays running long enough. Sometimes it goes into shutdown so fast, you can't check to make sure that it's set properly. But we'll use another chassis that's working to get re readings and measurements to see if we can mess with it because somebody has already done some work to it and they've gotten rid of all the glue. You can see that they've tried to grind away all the glue and then they've got access to it. They drilled a hole right through the middle of it, looks like. Um, can I even turn it? Yes, I can turn it. But looking at it, I think that based off my experience, it should be roughly eh, it should be roughly there. If my memory serves me, it should be there. Somebody had it sitting sitting uh, like that. And that's not where it should be. It should be closer to roughly right there. So we'll use another chassis to take measurements to make sure that it's uh, reading properly. Because this may all boil down to simply uh, this being out of adjustment. But this shouldn't have been out of adjustment from the factory. I think it was going into shutdown because of all this normal nastiness. And somebody tried to, instead of trying to fix the problem, they just tried, went right for the shutdown pot to adjust it. So let's go ahead and just get all this rework complete and then kind of go from there. So we always remove the original solder first. And then we'll remove the resistor and I think I already spotted the problem my suspicions were correct that R101 was not even in circuit usually when R101 is not in circuit it won't even turn on but stranger things have happened here so let's get this puppy out of here and I I'm taking it out so I can clean the legs off uh, I want to clean off the legs because they're oxidized. But now that I have it out, let's look at what I saw. And I think that this pad is broken. And show sure enough. Oh, nope, I lied. Show sure not enough, sorry. It's not broken. I it whatever what I thought was a broken pad was just flux residue. But if we we can clearly see here that it's still connected. Interesting. All right. Well, actually that's not that pad is not bad. It's just lifted. But I'm not worried about that cuz we're going to solder right to this next uh, this uh, via next to it. And this side doesn't appear to be bad either cuz if this was oxidized then all that solder would have sucked up onto the iron and you'd have nothing left here but an oxidized pad. But since the solder is still stuck to it, it's probably pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and remove the solder from R89 here as well. Just to make sure that its pad is okay. And yeah, it seems to be okay because like I say, if, if you remove the solder from the pad, and this, there's no solder left on the pad, 
uh, and it's just one big gray pad, then uh, it's so oxidized that the solder isn't sticking to the pad. But since I was able to remove all that, it appears to be good. So we'll clean all that up and then be able to just re uh, reflow new solder right onto it. I'm not really going to mess with this because we got to change the cap anyway. But uh, all right. Yeah, not, not so bad. Not so bad. Let's clean up our resistor here. If your legs are oxidized, then your solder is not going to stick to it. And you create higher resistance, and that's what burns up the pad. And I think that should work. Let's brush all this off into the trash can. I don't want that all in my hands. All within my hands. Squeeze it out. Crush it down. All within my hands. Hold it dear. Hold it suffocate. All within my da -da -dun -da -da -dun 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 hands. A little deep cut for you there. Most of you probably won't know it, but those of you who do know that song, good on you. Good on you. Alright, so let's get this back in. It's always uh, more difficult than you'd imagine. And it never goes right through. There we are. All righty. that at all. Not one bit. Alright, that's better. That's okay. Alright, let's go to this one. Again, the reason I bridge these is because it creates more surface area and allows the heat to transfer a bit better and it doesn't sorry off camera it doesn't uh, burn up the pads and traces as often or as easily God, it looks like garbage come on I need to stop zooming in so far because I, I keep missing stuff here. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's that's way too much solder, but yeah, that's better. Okay. I don't like it, but it'll work. Okay, this for uh, testing purposes that should be okay. All right, now let's hit R104 here. There we go. And let's look at our voltage regulator. Solder seems okay. Let's look at our flyback. Seems okay. 
so let's zoom out give it a good general look over alright uh, I see that D10 is on the bottom side of the board which sometimes they are don't know why but D10 is responsible for a shutdown so it's possible that somebody was took it off the board to test it because you can take D if you have shutdown or high voltage shutdown you can take D10 out of circuit and if the chassis powers up uh, that's a check to see if you have a high voltage side problem or something else problem then you put D10 back in circuit so I guess since that's been messed with we can start by testing that normally it resides on the top of the board obviously right here there's a right there is where it's supposed to be right there but someone took it off probably didn't want to put it back on the top side so on the bottom it goes and if we test it diode mode negative lead on the side with the stripe positive on the side without the stripe and it checks good so okay all right well in the spirit of that let's test our voltage regulator should be about 0.160 uh, 150 or 148 good enough HOT is good critical safety cap is good all right um, R103 should be 3 ohms 2.8 uh, okay R104 Move this thermistor out of the way. R104 should be 15 ohms. And 15.6, close enough. R101 should be about 5K in circuit. Four point nine, five 5K, all right, so R101's okay. R89 should be 3.9. 3.8, close enough. R88 is 1.8. Yep, 1.8K, I'm sorry. Uh, and then we got R97 should be 270 ohms. Close enough, 271. R96 should be 1.8. 1.8. So our power resistors are good. 103, 104, 80, 88, 89, 96, 97. Voltage regulator, HOT. Uh, let's test our C38 width cap. Just to make, we're just checking to make sure that it's not shorted and it is not shorted. Our critical safety cap is good. Well, that's basically all of our power components. Uh, before we power it up, okay, all of our chassis pots are okay. Let's replace uh, I think it's C57 I don't know it is bulging slightly so we'll change out this cap here the, the 47 microfarad um, or is it picofarad I forget what the UF is it's been a long day uh, and we'll check to make sure that this pot is set correctly against one that is known working so as a matter of fact let's grab the last one I fixed and see what it reads here okay shutdown pot reads uh, 800 ohms and 1.2 K so if we test this one we could probably do it from the top side but let's just go this route we got okay yeah see I need to make that needs to be 800 K so let's go this way slightly almost little more did I say 800 K I meant 800 ohms I mean, that should be close enough, but 
I want it to read the same as the other one. Uh, back over here. Oh, almost perfect. Now this should be 1.2. 1.3, uh, It'll probably be okay. All right, so now we have that set. I think uh, what I'm gonna do now is just try and turn it on, see what it does. Because if it doesn't, if it still goes into shutdown now, I know it's not our power resistors or um, our power components. There's nothing that tells me now, there's nothing indicating that it shouldn't power up. I realize now we didn't test the fuse. Uh, we have 0 0.3 ohms. Fuse is good. I always like to take these out, just kind of clean the edges a bit and snap it back in place. Um, all right, so let's change. Someone's done a... <laughs> they've changed, I think, uh, they've changed... They've changed two, these two caps, this cap, this cap, and this cap. Oh, and this one. The rest of them all are factory. Now, why they picked and choose, I don't... Picked and choose picked and chose, I don't know, but let's get uh, this cap out of here. And you can tell it's bulging if you put it down on something that's flat and doesn't sit flat. It's it's hard to tell. It, it doesn't really wobble on the mat because the mat's not perfectly flat, but you can feel it's absolutely bulging slightly. So let's grab a new cap. What a 200, 250 volt 47. I'm sure I got one in here. Let's clean off the pads first. <clears throat> And this is a flux, uh, fluxapalooza. 250 volt 47. Where are you at? Where are you at? Do I have one in here? I don't want to dump the whole damn thing out. There we go. There's one. And, uh, no, nope, that's a different one. Eh, that'll have to do. All right. This is just my bag o spare, bag o spare pot uh, pots there. Yeah. All right. So if we go like so, I don't know if I'll be able to set this in here because it was installed at one point and got taken out probably uh, from another chassis that ended up being a donor and it helps if you put it in correctly Stay in there. Well, I don't, I'm going to have to probably find a different one because this one doesn't want to stay in there. And I don't think that I've got... That one doesn't like to... Gonna have to start with that one.
Okay. That'll work. Okay, sorry about that. Let's verify we have continuity. Yep, nothing wrong there. Nothing wrong there. And we are secure. Okay. All right, let's get it on a tube, see what happens. I think I want to reflow this first though. And they all seem okay, but it's just super. The, the solder on this these joints is always just super, super thin. That's all I wanted to do as a last step there. <clears throat> Let's go here with it. All right, it's tube time. All right, we're all hooked up here. Uh, anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, remote, but no video. I'm not interested in the video signal just yet. Right now, we're just checking to make sure it turns on. But all of our testing indicated that nothing was wrong, or shorted, or open, or out of tolerance. So it should power on unless there's a bad solder joint, or the flyback is bad. Who knows? Uh, but that being said, uh, the two pots that are broken should not affect it in any way. It's just going to affect color, but should not affect operation. So let's turn it on. See what we get. One, two, three. And it turned on. There's no arcing and sparking from the cracked flyback. And it is still running. Nothing popping. Nothing arcing. Nothing smoking. Okay, I think it's time to turn this off. And, yep, we got the discharge, auto discharge. Let's give it a signal. We're going to be missing... Uh, well, the we're not going to be missing blue because the main blue signal is from the drive pot. Uh, but we're probably going to be missing a lot of green because the green drive pot's broken. But let's kill our overhead light here. Oh, not I don't have a board plugged in. That's not going to do anything. Let's get our TPG and see what our TPG tells us here. Standard res. All right, let's see what happens now. One, two, three. Do we get anything? It lives! Well, <laughs> uh, let's turn down contrast all the way. It'll let me. There we go. Brightness all the way. And wow, look at the flyback is way too high. Brightness contrast are all the way down. And look at the raster lines. So we need to, someone was fiddling with some adjustments, not knowing what they were doing. So if we adjust our flyback, eh, slipped off there, right about there 
Sweetness? All right. Okay, contrast and brightness back up. I'll grab contrast. Mm. There we go, brightness. Whoa, let's turn brightness up and contrast back down first. Should have started with brightness. Brightness until we get, well, we've already got the background, so turn brightness down until we lose it. There it is. And then contrast back up until, I'd say, whoa, roughly there. All right, and we have almost no green, which is why it's overly red here. It's hard to tell. It's much more pronounced in person. Uh, if we turn our green cutoff up, eh, it didn't really do much. So if you see here, if we scroll to, see, yeah, there's no green at all. Because our green drive pot is broken, if I turn up the green cutoff, there's a little bit of green, but almost nothing. And that's due to the, like I say, the cutoff doesn't really affect the, the color so much as the drive pot does. So, uh, but hey, at least we have a functional chassis now. We know there was nothing actually Nothing else wrong with, I think all of our problem was just that um, bulging cap due to the R101 being pretty much out of circuit or high, high resistance, making it out of, out, of, uh, out of tolerance in circuit. I can't say, but amazingly our completely cracked flyback is uh, not a problem apparently. So, um, It's going to be interesting to see uh, if we can make this uh, back to life here. So I'm going to have to replace the color pots and then go through and do a total reflow. And I'm going to go ahead and do a full cap kit because this is the owner had me go ahead and do a cap kit on the last one. A little update, I guess, is when I left you on the last one, that was kind of up in the air whether they wanted a cap kit or not. But he chose to do a cap kit, so I threw a cap kit on that one. I'll probably have to do a cap kit on this one because I'm assuming he's going to want a cap kit on this one. So I'm going to cut away, I'll do a full cap kit, full reflow, replace the color pots, then we'll do some final testing. Uh, I actually need to reach out to him and see if he wants to replace the flyback, because it's working. It's cracked all over the place, but it is functional. We don't have any lines or flickering brightness or sparking or sparking. That's all seems to be working. Uh, so we'll have to see what he wants to do. So when I cut back... Whatever ends up being done will be done, and we'll do some final testing and call this one a repair, so stand by. All right, so it's actually the next day here. I got caught up last night working on a bunch of other stuff, but I have accomplished the full cap kit, the full reflow, new flyback per the customer. They, I contacted him. He said, yeah, throw that in there because uh, he wants these to work as long as possible or have the longest longevity. So we'll show this in a moment because I want to show Case how to clean this up. Uh, but here is the original white knob flyback, and we can kind of see it even better now. If we look here, it's cracked all the way around. And in preparation, I didn't grab my pointers here. So it's just, it's cracked completely, almost completely around here. Around the focus, it's broken. And then, of course, we saw down here and across this way. So I showed him this, and what's well, even cracked up across here. Wow. He said, yeah, absolutely replace it. So we've got a brand new one in, uh, along with the cap kit and the flyback. Yeah, we new one. And I got the broken pots replaced, so we should have our green back. Got them all centered as I normally do. We can adjust from there. Uh, and I brushed this off, cleaned it up as best as I could. But the, before we put it on the tube and test it one last time, and put it through its final paces. Uh, I want to show my method for cleaning these. I always talk about how I do cap kits and reflows and then show the monitor working and that's it. But I don't think I've ever showed my cleaning process. So we can look here on the aftermath from replacing these parts. And for instance, the flyback. You can see all of the flux residue from the solder and, and the desoldering braid and the gun, desoldering gun. So you can brush all this till the cows come home and you're just making more work for yourself. So I get a pair of, of uh, tweezers here and what I do is I'll scrape all this old flux, this hardened flux off of here. Put 
That way when you go to actually clean this, it's so much easier with all this stuff removed. Or not really removed, but just kind of loosened up. Because it pretty much turns to powder when you scrape on it. And I'm not going to go through and through here on camera and clean the entire chassis. I'm going to do that off camera. But I just want to show what I do to clean this up and make it a bit easier when it comes time to do this. And I recommend doing this yourself. Of course, you don't want this to be sharp. You don't want this to scrape and cut up the board. But it's, you're just wanting it to be good enough to where you can get rid of all this old hardened flux around here. And when it comes time to use the alcohol and cleaning this up, it just makes it so much easier. And now that I mentioned the word alcohol, I forgot that I actually... Part of what I was working on last night was another another machine. And I realized my alcohol is in the other room over there. So let me finish scraping this up here. Then I'll go grab it. All right, so then we'll take our brush here and just kind of brush all this away. Got a little bit. This is factory flux here, I think. So doing all that really makes a difference. Makes it much easier to clean. You don't have to sit there and rub us hard with the brush and various things like that. Alright, so let me grab the alcohol and the uh, brush here. I'll be right back. Give me a moment. Alright, so what we do here is I'll take the old toothbrush, clean it off a bit, and then we'll get some alcohol on there and just kind of go to town here. Then you'll dab it with your towel. And there you go. Looking nice. Better than factory. So all that residue is gone. We got good joints. I uh, didn't quite get over here very much. But there you have it. So that's the cleaning process that I do on everything that's got the flux residue all over it. Um, then you want to clean off your brush to get the flux off the brush. Then we'll go through and repeat that process like around, like look at this. Well, let's go back. See, this, is, this turned out very well. So we saw what it was before, now it's spotless and squeaky clean. So we go through and do basically the same process here for all of all of this. Now I didn't reflow any of this. This is either factory or somebody reflowed it in the past. I didn't reflow it because it didn't need reflowed, because uh, either somebody already reflowed it or it was still good. Over time, over time, flux becomes conductive, so you really don't want to leave it on there. Okay, that is much better. I 
and there you have it. You can see it's just that easy. It takes a little bit of time and a little bit of effort, but the end result with a nice, good looking, fresh mint chassis uh, really puts the finishing touches on it. So now I have to basically go through and do all of this. I do this on every chassis I work on, and it's, I, admittedly, I might have forgotten to do it on one or two here and there because I'll get excited about fixing one that had a real big uh, head scratcher problem, and I might forget to do this. But for the most part, I do this on all the ones I work on. I just don't ever show it, so I figured I'd show some of the process here since this wasn't too hard of a repair or too long of a video. And uh, that's basically about it. So I'm going to go through and do the whole chassis here. And then uh, we'll put it back on a tube. And see if it works after the rework. And if it does, we'll give it the burn in and make sure it's issue free. Of course, you don't want to push too hard and crack the board or break something, but that's uh, not bad, not bad at all. All right, so I'm gonna finish up all the rest of this. When I come back, I'll have this on the tube and ready for testing one last time, and we'll see if it works and what becomes of it. So here we go. All right, full cleaning is now accomplished. Uh, everything is hooked back up. Anode neck yoke ground power video remote. Uh, we have our test pattern generator here. So let's turn it on for the first time after all of the rework and cleaning. Make sure it still works. And if it does, uh, we'll see if we can make some adjustments, how good we can make it look. The new flybacks come with the screen pot turned all the way down. So I have it turned up about a quarter or so. Hopefully that should be okay. If it's too high, we'll have to adjust it. The screen size, position, everything should still be all the same roughly, assuming the caps were good, which I think they were, but we would change them out anyway for longevity. Uh, so, all right, let's turn the test pattern generator on. Let's make sure it functions and works, and if we have our green back after replacing our pots, and then uh, we'll do a little bit more testing, and hopefully this works as it's supposed to. So here we go. One, two, three. Okay, it comes back on. Uh, what kind of an image do we get? Well, it does work. It took a little while. Uh, we're a bit too tall. We're way too tall, actually. Bring the size down. Oh, uh, yeah, way, uh, way too tall. Hmm. Vertical position. Oh, not way too tall. Okay, there's the top. And we crest at the black area. Down here we crest. Okay, so it's actually pretty perfect. Ah, I spoke too soon. H position. We got a little black on this side and overhang this side. So let's about even it out. Hey, we're perfect on the width as well. Well, look at that. Perfect. Pretty close to how it was before as far as having to adjust things. I, I didn't expect to have to adjust much. Um, but, uh, yeah, turned out okay, so let's do, make sure we have our green, and absolutely we have our green, so <laughs> imagine that. A broken color pot will rob you of color, which we already knew, but uh, replacing it obviously fixed the problem, and that looks, that looks fantastic. Uh, flyback apparently doesn't need uh, adjusting, we kind of ballparked it and nailed it first try out of the gate. Uh, yeah, everything else was pretty much adjusted where it was previously when we were doing testing with the original caps and flybacks, so that actually worked out pretty well. Look at that. Let's make sure that we have, let's turn this off, and let's make sure we don't need to adjust our 50-60 hertz pot by using a real PCB, my handy dandy MK1 here, and, oh, yeah, there we go. Uh... No, we don't. It looks pretty good. It's a lot dimmer and darker than the other one. Uh, this puts out a higher video signal, so let's turn up our brightness slightly and our contrast and our two green, but otherwise not too bad. Uh, let's move our H position over, and we're two red still too. There we go. Let's turn down uh, red drive and green drive. 
roughly eh. turn blue up a bit that's pretty good right there nice all right so another working chassis now hopefully it lasts the owner a good long while there's pretty much uh, bulletproofed this one as best that we can quick and easy uh, fix here so I let this run my normal length of time and barring any unforeseen circumstance I assume it'll work just fine so thanks for watching hopefully you learned something like share and subscribe and I have two 7500s on the tail end of this one uh, for the same person so next next two videos will be a series on uh, the K7500 so stay tuned for those I appreciate it again like share and subscribe and we'll see you next time